All right, all right, all right, all right. So you're a Christian. You follow the Bible. You're doing Christian things. You're doing. You're going to church. You're doing all that. But what if I told you that there's three things strongly exhorted in Scripture that you're probably not doing? Let's just jump right in. This, this, this is salvation. So you know that person that you don't get along with, you know, you just can't stand them. You want nothing to do with them and they don't even like you either. You know, the best idea is just to zone them out, avoid, ignore, have nothing to do with them. It seems like the logically right thing that normal people would do, right? Maybe. Or how about that individual or group that opposes your faith or even a step further, people who just hate Christians like you in general? What should we do with them? Well, 99% of people would hold a grudge and say, forget them, I could care less what happens to them, just get them out of my life. But wait, check this out. In Matthew 5, Jesus says this. You've heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. And this is Jesus saying, but I say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you'll be acting as true children of your father in heaven. Jesus is literally calling us to do exactly the opposite of what our flesh desires, to put aside the thoughts of anger, revenge, and apathy towards these type of individuals and pray for them instead. How counterculture is this? How opposite of our feelings is this? But yet, this is what Christ calls us to do. Are you doing it? Is this evident in your life? Maybe we can all use a bit of help from the Holy Spirit to change the way we approach situations like this and start praying for our enemies and persecutors more. Number two, when's the last time you ever thought about a Christian in another country? God's word calls us not to forget those in prison. In Hebrews 13, 3, the intended audience in Hebrews, although they needed a great amount of encouragement to persevere, they were known for their compassion and frequent visits to the believers who were suffering in prison to support them during their persecution. And likewise, here and now, we still have a duty to support these believers who are being persecuted for their faith. After all, we are all brothers and sisters in the faith connected by Christ. And here's just some quick facts. According to Open Doors US, last year, 5,621 Christians were murdered and 4,542 Christians were detained because of reasons related to their faith and more than 360 million, that's one in seven Christians worldwide are suffering high levels of persecution or discrimination in their faith. And North Korea tops this list of countries that are worst for Christian persecution, followed by Somalia, Yemen, Eritrea, Libya, Nigeria, Pakistan, Iran, Afghanistan, and Sudan. And there's many more instances in other countries, even in your own country, in your own area, where Christians are probably being persecuted and they need your genuine prayer support. You know what I think? I think that Christians just don't realize that their fellow believers out there that are being ostracized, tormented, abused, tortured, and even murdered just because they believe in Christ. The very same faith that we get to enjoy comfortably here in America is nothing close to comfort for other people around the world who are suffering persecution. So pray for them. Pray for them to endure. Pray for them to keep the faith. Pray for them to keep their eyes focused on Christ no matter what. Pray for their families that are suffering. Pray for the children who are left without parents. Pray as you feel led by the Holy Spirit. These brothers and sisters need our prayers. We cannot allow our comfortable lives to mask the fact that this is a true need. Consider making this a priority in your prayer life. I'm serious. Number three, are you making Jesus known? Jesus commands us in Matthew 28 with a great commission. And that great commission is to go and make disciples, to baptize them, to teach them everything. Jesus has commanded us to go, AKA go and share the gospel. You see, Western Christianity has no fire for evangelism. In your average church, only a handful of people, if that, are passionate for sharing Christ. Unfortunately, our default form of evangelism has resolved to just inviting some of the church, hoping that the pastor or some other Christian is going to do the work for us. You know, we resolve the preaching of the gospel to someone else and uh, when really, when you're a believer, when you're a disciple of Christ, he has called you to be an ambassador of the gospel. We've gotten too lazy with this Western Christianity mindset that just doesn't have an urgency to spread the gospel. So let me light a fire under you as to why this is so important to carry out the Great Commission. The gospel is the good news of Christ. The good news of Christ is that Jesus came down to die for our sins. In doing so, he took the wage of sin, death, and eternal separation in hell that you and I were required to face, and he wiped it out. 
He puts his righteousness on those who believe. So on that final day, they are declared holy and righteous before the judgment seat of God. They will be spared of eternal hell due to the mercy and grace of Christ that is credited to them. You know, it's so easy to live this life day to day, not focusing on the eternal aspect of our souls. But when we shift our eyes from the physical to the spiritual, as Christians, we believe all those without Christ in the end will face eternal torment forever and ever. So carrying out this great commission is more than just asking someone to join your church. It's a rescue line for their soul because they are doomed without this gospel that you have. So don't hide it, share it. Ask God to give you the boldness because once you truly understand the gospel, there's no way you would not want to share it. Guys, why are so many of us inactive when it comes to preaching the gospel? I don't get it. So in conclusion, these are just three things that I feel I see lacking in today's Western influence church. And I just want to bring it to your attention so that we can focus on being genuine followers of God's word. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.